Hi, Chad. My name is Robert Johnson. I'm bringing this to your attention because I was told this is the route I need to go to make a movement, to make a change in laws. What they're trained, the police officers that are served to, or supposedly sent to serve and protect, um, the corruption within the police force, the lack of training, the corruption, the um, just the overall way they do things. I know how false convictions that I've pled guilty to, and I'd like to tell you how about they have shown up. First of all, I called the police for help to get my children to safety on July 13th of 2022. My ex-wife is a narcissist, like a full-out narcissist. Textbook definition, everything you read about through the medical books to a T describes her and many other people in this world. So where the problem is, is when people like that manage to get people like me, innocent people, arrested constantly, and they don't listen. There's more of us in jail, in the jails, than there are police officers. And I've already seen an uprise getting ready to happen. So I'm asking that you listen carefully to everything I'm saying and help me make changes. When I say I called the police to have my children removed, three officers had shown up. Two went inside the house to talk to my ex, while one stayed outside talking to me. I told him everything that had happened over the last little bit of time, how she's been just whatever, they're going off the wall and everything, and I just need their help getting my kids to safety, which I was going to bring them to my parents. I was actually driving over to my parents when I called them. When that officer went inside to go compare notes, the other officer came running out because I was unattended. And he was saying, no, I'm arresting him, I'm arresting him. And I asked him, for what? Because it doesn't matter, I'm going to arrest you anyways. I'm like, I have evidence on me of her smashing her head off an end table, causing herself marks. I did not touch her. I don't care. I'm still going to arrest you. He replies. Well, are you fucked? Buddy, I just told you I have evidence. I'm innocent. I don't care. I'm still going to arrest you. Well, yo, that's, that's fucked. So what does he do? He finds school. Let me see what you have then. So a two minute video. I put on and before five seconds was up, he already had handcuffs on me. He wasn't, he didn't care. He just wanted me to have my hands out so he can arrest me. He removed me from my home where my kids were left in her custody. Now, I had an undertaking that night. Uh, I never saw the inside of the cell that night because the officer that drove me back to the station was the officer I talked to. So they kept their heads down, they kept their mouths closed because this other guy, no, he's gonna do whatever. And disclosure was just so much bullshit, I couldn't believe it. Either way, I got a peace bond for that. But getting to that peace bond, I had been arrested maybe six times total, if I remember correctly. Because she would call, cry wolf, and they would jump. Their fingers would get pointed for them, saying, that's a bad guy, go get him. But I never did nothing wrong, not once. I breached myself and I called the police and told them I breached myself. I did this because when my stepson showed up and got out of the car, he ran up to me and he told me that mommy's saying that you don't love us. Mommy's saying that you don't want us to come back. Whenever I go to talk about you, they say that I'm instigating problems, but it's okay for his older sister to talk to, or younger sister to talk to the mom about me and there's no instigation that then they are allowed to talk about it. But they're not allowed to talk about it if he's trying to talk about it. And it made him upset. So I tried to tell him, like, hey, buddy, why don't you call mom and tell her how, how you feel about this? So he did. He had a smile on his face because I was encouraging him and, and everything, his special needs. Right away, she starts talking shit to him. So I was like, okay. So he handed me the phone over all sad. I go, hello, which was the breach right there. But she hung up the phone and she didn't even hear me say that. I told him to go make a video on how it makes him feel and see if he feels better letting it out. So anyways... While he was doing that, I called her back. I went up one side of her and then down the other side of her for kind of horrible person she is. And then I called the police right after to tell him I have a child wellness. Like, like I'm, I care about their well-being. Like, I love my children. I used to sing to them. I used to sing to them every night as I put them to bed. 
she has told me after walking out on us three times in the course of six months, she hates being a mother, she hates the kids. She's sick of being stuck at home all the time. Even though we give her options, well, well, I'll stay home today. My mom would come over and watch the kids, and then she'd be like, no, I have nowhere to go. So was, whatever, she's a narcissist. What that is is she was looking for a supply. She had a supply. She had plans with the supply. She has no feelings whatsoever unless it's shame. And the shame comes from when she gets caught doing something, and she's not even ashamed for the act she's doing. She's ashamed that she got caught. This is what narcissists are like, all of them. It's textbook. It's in medical books on how they are. They lie. They manipulate. They smear your name. They turn people against you. They'll have you charged with false things just to basically show that they have more power. And she studied law. She was an honor student studying law. So she knows how to like, manipulate everything. I fear for my kid's safety. Bring it to another officer. I called in and said I would like a wellness check. And this one officer started giving me attitude, giving me a problem, saying, we're not going to go over there and check on your kids because you, like, want to know how they're doing and stuff like that. I go deal with it in courts and blah, 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 blah. Like, tell me how much he's like, he doesn't like people like me. So I asked him, so you're not going to do a wellness check? He goes, no, I'll do a wellness check for you, and I'll call you back and let you know. So he got off the phone. Then he got back on the phone with me to tell me, okay, he called to see how the kids were doing, and they're fine, and then warned me about harassment. He called instead of showing up and checking on the kids for marks like a wellness check is supposed to be. Talk to the kids, make sure the kids are okay. Nothing like that happens. That's the that's second goof. The third one, when I say I've been arrested numerous times, I've dealt with maybe 30 cops. I'm not talking about all of them because they're not all bad. The third cop was racist. He's an atheist as well. He made that clear. The reason I was arrested was because of my spiritual beliefs, my culture. I'm native. I'm barefoot on a dog. But I'm also, if you look at me, very white. So it's very confusing to some people. But the evidence that my ex decided to give him for his investigation consisted of only partial information. Partial information. Enough to say I breached. And I was locked up for three weeks because of it. With me to get out, I had to plead guilty. And then there was more probation orders, more criminal records. I asked the officer several times, you saw all five videos. He said, yeah, I did, yeah, I did. Yes, I did, yeah, I saw them. Yeah, no, I saw. I heard what I heard. I wrote down exactly word for word. I keep playing it back. You, you breached, you had an indirect contact by asking the daughter to talk to the mother. I was like, yeah, but you, so you didn't see all five then because the first one I sent this is me saying you can't say nothing because I'll go to jail. I was explaining things to her, but you can only do one minute at a time on these videos. I think it was Snapchat or unless it was Messenger. I can't remember what it was in, at this point. So over a year ago. So but the point is, he kept saying that I that he saw all five videos, including the video that shows I did not breach. When I was up against new charges, I got arrested. May 1st, last time I saw my children of last year. Mail had gone to the wrong house. I had contacted Canada Post trying to ask them to go pick up the thing, go pick up the mail. They said they couldn't do that. So they put me on hold to talk to um, a supervisor. I got in the car. I went to go to see my kids at the Hamilton Regional Indian Center on Ottawa Street for the Monday night dinners that we do. And my mom had messaged her on her own accord about my milk and come get that please and she said to my mom that she was going to have it sent back my mom sent me a text while I was on the phone and already gone so while I'm still waiting to like talk to this guy I check I see what her message is okay that's fine well my mom then sent my dad to go pick up go pick up the parcel no not giving the parcel over pretty much ruined my business well, going in jail and not being able to get out, also not paying the overhead, ruined my business. But that was customers' uh, orders that just came in through the wrong address. I was on the phone with Canada Post the whole time. And when I finally spoke to the supervisor, she said, fill out a police report. There's nothing on our end showing that anyone made a call for a pickup on this parcel that she's claiming that she has already done. I stuffed the mail. 
So when I went to the police station after I was done on the phone and done with my Monday night thing with my daughters, which unfortunately I even have a video the last time I spent time with my daughter and how much she was scared to go home, how much she didn't want to go home. And when I pulled out the camera, she just would not want to talk to the camera. Mom has brainwashed her and conditioned her not to talk to the cameras. I know what kind of person she is. I lived it. But no one seems to get that part. Everyone seems to be manipulated by her because they don't know her like I know her. She has a pattern of doing this to all of her exes. But no one wants to bring that up. So, this officer lies because as I am arrested the next morning, I and both my parents pointed out to this new officer that they never asked me to do shit. He goes, well, you'll get bailed. And I said, no, I'll be going to jail then. See, I see things. So he's like, oh, you'll get bailed. I'm like, no. And when I got into the, the car, I was like, look, it, I was at the police station last night. And I tried filling out a report. And you guys told me to come back in the morning. And now you guys are here to arrest me. Because I never knew any of that. This is after my rights were read to me. How come it was not brought up in court? So you just had two people tell you, you tell me that I'm being charged for indirect contact again or trying to um, go talk to my ex, which I never did. Both my parents are standing right there and like, like, he never did that. He never did that. But you still arrested me anyways. You didn't want to tell me what the other thing was. I got denied bail because they brought up the fact that uh, there was an uttering threat thing that was not a threat uttered at all. If they would have actually listened to the words being said, I described a, an event that happened a year prior when I made this in January, this thing, this last year, by the way. So in January, I made a video explaining for the last 10 years of my life what I've gone through. And I mentioned what happened, an incident, this fight that she started, I, that was a year prior. I mentioned what happened when I got home, what actually happened and what I did. And then I made a statement along the lines, I'm so glad I have self-control because if not, I'd probably cut off her fucking head. I got charged for a threat for that. Saying a sarcastic line after describing what happened in an incident that was a year prior. Wasn't directed at anyone or anything like that. I got out on bail for that one in July or in January, but then they arrest me in May and they bring it back up. So... There is then talk about a machete that was asked for. And what this is, is I had a list of property I've yet to remove because everything in that house is mine. The only thing I bought on her were clothes and like one, one piece of furniture. So I, I lost everything. She, she kept most of the uh, expensive stuff, stuff that has like memories on it from before we were together. Like uh, my computers, my, uh, my playstations and stuff. She broke collector stuff and threw it inside the, a storage bin. Inside my parents' house, she had the CAS drop off a, a, a bunch of things. This list was a property removal that I was going to show the police when I went to go do a property removal. She refused my parents to have this, but she gave it to the CAS to drop off at my parents' house, and that was the parcel in which she claimed she was returning. Now, when I got released in August... And we were going to put that in a storage that they already had. I started pulling all these boxes out. And the one box that I had labeled stuff on top of the fridge I had a piece of tape over top of it with her writing stuff down on top of the fridge. Why would you need to relabel this box? So I opened it knowing that's where the machete was. And I pulled the machete out. It wasn't on or hidden or anything. It was off to the side, but not now. Now it's right on top. First thing you see when you open those flaps. The machete was a piece of cardboard, first whatever, like a, a waterproof decor that goes over top of your windshield wiper, your rear windshield wiper, like the cat's tails and stuff. That's a Jason Voorhees Halloween prop. You can't do nothing with it. it bends. Like it's not plastic and hard plastic it's it, it's a piece of bristol board looking stuff like the signs that you see outside on people's lawns when there's like windows being done or roofing being done that kind of plastic velcro attaches it to your 
your windshield wiper. And the crown belittled both my parents. The judge got mad at me. I was shaking my head because uh, like, I couldn't believe the crap coming out of the crown's mouth. And thought I was trying to signal to my mom or something, which I wasn't. She was putting down my parents and going off about the fear that her client has is a victim of this abuse. I've never abused my wife once. I dealt with mental abuse and emotional abuse for the last couple of years of living there with her. The kids were starting to as well, especially the last six months of being there. So she's sticking up for this, like this criminal and it's like putting us all down. And I even said, that's a piece of plastic. Well, you're not supposed to speak when you're in court. So even though I'm trying to, you know, put it out there, the truth, like, look at your so-called victim is acting scared of a piece of plastic that was asked for because it was on the list to show the police. It was interesting. And that box that I found that had her writing on it, I pulled out the, uh, the, the camera, but it's not going to matter because there's no proof that that's how I found it. But when I looked at the tape carefully, it was already cut open, gone through. Please don't do nothing about that. So I ended up doing a bunch of time last year because of that. I got denied bail. Then my lawyer said, look, it, you're either going to be in there until May for a trial, which if you lose the trial, you'll be there longer. Or you're going to be there until April if they give you a full sentence right now. But I have a deal with the Crown that we just plead guilty to three things right now and we'll let you out. I just want to see my kids. So I did. I haven't seen my kids. September comes along and my stepdaughter's reaching out to us. So we deal with that. I go see her. I spent, you know, I spent some time, gave her some stuff to give uh, my daughters, customized little rabbits I got from the Peach Festival in Winona uh, with their names on it. And then she wanted a pair of a new gamer headset thing, so I gave her the one that I had. Her mom was very mad that she saw us. I called the police instantly. Please show up at my house. Looking for me. My mom called, gave me, gave them the phone. And they told me that um, the courts say that I have to be supervised. And I was like, there's no court for anything along those lines of any custody, actually. And then they had the nerve to tell me that, okay, well, to avoid anything in the future, next time I spend time with the kids, make sure I have that paper handy. So there's no paper that exists. And I'm supposed to have that handy to avoid problems with the police, they tell me. Okay. Now, since then, this is happens in September. A couple weeks ago, I got a phone call from the police telling me about videos. I'm posting videos, yeah, music videos. I'm like, yeah. And then they said, well, we had an anonymous call that you're anonymous. Okay. Then he kind of gives it away that it wasn't exactly anonymous. It was my ex-wife calling because she doesn't like that I'm revealing truth in videos, music videos, things I have to say about narcissists and whatever. So, or the truth I say when I refer to an ex. So I asked the officer, did you see any of these videos yet? And he said, no. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, well, that's one thing you should do before you call me. And one another thing I'm a little bit confused about is you guys told me to avoid stuff in the future, which this is from a nice cop, to uh, change my, get a new YouTube and get a new Reverb Nation, which I did. So for her to be calling and complaining about these videos, that means she's stalking me. What do you guys do about that? Nothing. I see. I see. So fingers were pointed at me after a sociopath puts marks on herself and now they don't ever want to listen to me. It's not stolen this year. Oh, well, too bad. I used to do the police lots for the salting and shoveling. 
fire lots, ambulance lots, parks, libraries. I used to help out my community a lot. I used to do a lot for people. And when there was problems, I would tell them how to talk to the police about it, how to bring it to the police station. I don't do any of that no more. There have been a few good cops that I appreciate, thank God. I don't want no part of the uprise that's happening. Laws need to be changed. When I say change, these are the changes that have to be made. First of all, they got to be trained on what a sociopath is, is like. Remain unbiased and be able to tell like something's going on here. Know when to sit back and see what the next thing that happens is. Because that's how sickening these people make it a game. So I'm being in charge with things that I'm not even doing. Because someone points their fingers and says he's doing this without any evidence. Or they put together fake evidence. They hand it in. They try to have it against me. She tried making a video look, make it look like I hit my daughter in the head and saying I'm, I'm abusive, but I've never done that. That's not what happened. And when I questioned her about it before it was removed from my home, with a grin on her face, she goes, I'll show you. And then she sends me uh, the video that wasn't edited yet. So I was able to send that in to the police and to the children and show them the full version of not the cutoff where it looks like I punched my daughter in the stomach while I was tickling her. There'd be this thing that she would do when my mom would watch her, that my mom would work on her laptop and I was working on my laptop. So she comes close trying to touch the keys and you go, eh, and you put your hand up and she falls backwards onto the couch. From the angle that the camera was at and where I was sitting, it looked like I went whack with this hand. This arm's a little bit messed up right now from a car accident though. So I did that. She fell back. And I took my hand. I started tickling her stomach, calling her a little bugger. There was no sound on this, which was weird. No sound. Why was there no sound if the sounds turned on? Don't want to hear the laughing of the child. She then gets up, hops to the TV, and then quietly sneaks up to the laptop to do it again. And we did it again, but that part wasn't a part of the video that was sent to me. She manipulated stuff to try to get me have, having more charges. So during this phone call with the police officer a couple weeks ago, the CAS tried calling me at the same time. I called the CAS back. After pretty much being told I can't, you know, have her charge with stalking. And was let off on a warning that about making videos. Well, I made more all right since then. And then make it pretty clear that if I go to jail, it's because they're trying to silence me. And I want no part of no uprise, no wars. The lyrics in the song say what they say. There's nothing incriminating about it. At all. There's no threats, there's no nothing. I'm pretty much pointing out what the future's coming to. And it's called Laws Need to Change or Bodies Need to Lay. You can look that up if you want. I don't know if it's on my The Preacher channel, The Preacher's World, I mean, or if it's on Robert Johnson, one or the other for the YouTube. The Preacher's World is the new one. The one that has less videos. The other one has like three, four hundred, whatever. I make a lot of music very gifted that way most things I write about come true because there are visions I have might be silhouettes or whatever the case is anything that goes on in an album called Decipher Deciphers which I'm on disc 7 now I started disc 6 in January of last year and anything I write down comes true before you start thinking I'm like that doesn't make sense 2014 I wrote something 2017 I heard the music I wrote it to I made the song overnight didn't take me long as they decided to read to the beat and then the next day I made a video my ex being the one holding the camera in this video you hear me at the beginning talking about there's no sense going delusional over the things that haven't happened yet and I'm trying to explain what's on my mind so I start explaining about what I start seeing. I start talking about vaccinations, strangulations. I even look around, turn, 
turn towards the clouds and say I'm weak and sick and I don't need this shit. This ain't a game I play. This is what I've been known for. I don't keep my gifts hidden, nor do I boast about them in any way. I'm humble. I keep to myself. I do what I do and I just release it. But when it goes on to a certain album, I've made it clear. If I say something that goes on this album, because it's meant to go on this album, I don't know when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Maybe a couple months, a couple days, a couple weeks, or even a couple years. Everything always happens. Right now, there's 98 songs on a playlist. Things have already happened for each one of them. Songs that I've made, talking about sitting alone now. Going after my children. I stopped making music in 2021 when she looked at me out of nowhere and made me feel like music was more important than my family with the words that she was saying. So to prove her wrong, I stopped making music because my family means more than anything, especially my daughters. I sang to them every night, every night as I put them to bed. I took care of them. I showed them love because I'm capable of it. Narcissists are not. When I talked to that CAS worker that day, she told me that I missed court last week. I was served. I wasn't served anything. I didn't know anything about court date last week. I've been trying to get a family lawyer. November 28th of 2022, I am brought a motion forward. Three times the courts called me back, even though duty counsel filled out all the paperwork for me and helped me with everything, saying there were mistakes. So the reply to be, no, there isn't. Check it again. And then, oh, there's another mistake, another mistake. And I had to hire a lawyer who I ended up firing because I'm going for full custody. And she called her, started yelling her, my ex on the phone, and um, basically said she's let me talk to the kids too much. So my every night phone call turned into once a week if I was lucky. So I fired her. And I was served 10 days later in April, the end of April of 2023. Right after I fired her. And then 10, 10 days after receiving that service thing, saying I had 30 days to uh, reply to her, I was arrested 10 days later on false charges. So now I have no idea where my kids are. I haven't known where they are since I got out. There's been brought up from what Kaylee, my stepdaughter, uh, had, was messaging my oldest daughter, Madison, of abuse that she's doing to Symphony, who's my youngest daughter. Harmony and Symphony are my two children, named after music because that's what I'm gifted in making. I haven't seen them. I don't know where they are. I got a call from the school once about Harmony's having an outburst on the bus and got kicked off the bus. Outrage. They're being taught to be neglected and hated by a man-hating woman who has no feelings. She's a narcissist. And she's pulling the strings on so many fucking cops right now. It's disgusting. I have nightmares. There's a back order for the pills I need till March of this year, I believe. I have to help people with nightmares. My nightmares are my kids screaming to me every night. I can't sleep. But I will be damned if I'm going to keep living this life like this. I'm wondering why things are different. So the changes need to be made. And I'm starting this movement. Laws need to be changed. They need to be changed. Because the people I fear for the most are the innocent cops, the good ones. That just because they're wearing a badge, they're a target. And it's not going to be fair to know that good officers out there who actually care about helping communities are going to end up dead. Because the community's sick and tired of law not doing what's proper. Too many false charges, too many incomplete investigations. Statements are not being taken by those who are being arrested. Why? 
Why are we not allowed to tell our side of the story here in Canada? Why is it that we are arrested and guilty until proven innocent? And even then? Why are we being arrested when we show or are able to prove we are innocent? I don't care that my life's probably ruined because of these charges. I don't give a shit about mine. I care about my kids and their safety and the fact that they're gifted and they need the only person in their life that loved them and showed them how to use their gifts properly is no longer there. While the mother wants to continue to be like a whore and talk shit to them. She will act like she's a great mom in front of a camera because that's what they do. They know how to put on one hell of a mask and that's all they do. But when you unmask them, they will ruin your life. When she started calling me a narcissist, I didn't even know what one was. And I looked it up and to a T it described her. If I would have known that you don't call a narcissist a narcissist or call them toxic or else they will ruin your life, I never would have did that day. And guess what? That day I was arrested, I called her everything. I called her toxic. I called her a narcissist. I even called her a moron. But according to disclosure, I called her a cunt, which I never did. She tried talking to me, telling me, when I was having my first initial phone call, so I told the police officer I was up in your face provoking you and it's not, there's nothing in the disclosure that said anything along those lines. And plus, I already know I can't believe anything comes out of her mouth. She's not said a single honest thing ever. And that's the thing that sucks is when you realize what these people are and how much time you spent with them, knowing that they never loved you. They didn't know how to love you. They may have said it, but they really didn't. And it was because of her doing drugs and not, I did not want those drugs in my house anymore that she started really turning. These laws need to change. They need to find out who the bad people are by proper investigations and remain unbiased no matter what one person says to them. Because anyone can cry wolf and act the part of the victim. Keep playing that part. But what sucks is when the person who is the real victim in the situation is made to look like they're the bad guy. I need help getting my kids. I need help putting her in jail where she belongs because in America, she would have been in jail for life for what she's doing. Pretty sure that's a law out there that when someone has you arrested on false charges while attempting to do a custody battle, pretty sure there's some kind of law that pretty much, no, no. In America, I know there is. That's all I know, though. I don't know what the law is. I don't know what anything is. I don't research that crap because I really don't care to know. What I care about is that our laws in Canada start looking proper and start working properly. Now, when they want to dig things up and they say, well, it's my history. About what, 16 years ago, maybe, my first wife, I had knee surgery. I was on Percocets. I wasn't on Percocets no more because they only gave me so many. I didn't like who I was. I felt irritated. I was in a lot of pain. My wife was pissing me off at the time, and I almost hit her. I hit her. I almost hit her. I stopped myself from falling through, but it still connected as I stopped. And I, I, that's, I had to live with that. That's not even the time that she went to the police. But when she went to the police, she went, and then the police came, and I had like 13 charges against me, apparently. I didn't even realize that because I looked around, and it's all broken glass and stuff that my mom watched me punch my photo through a glass uh, wall unit thing that we had. She wasn't even in the apartment. But the police showed up and decided to make their calls. Okay, well, this, 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 this. Okay, yeah, there was something that happened here. Yeah, my ex-wife was attacking me. She was smacking my back because I was trying to take my child, my son, out of away from her because she wanted to cancel Christmas plans. And I was like, I don't think so. You want to be the way you are, you can stay here. I'm, I'm taking my son with me because my family's looking forward to meeting him. So I'm being assaulted. 
So after getting hit enough times, I put her on the ground, restrained her. I just held her down there while my mom came in. I said, take Zach and put him in the car. My mom was like, just let, let her go. So I let her go. And she ran out and grabbed Zach. So the police arrest me. If I go back to a long, long time ago when my oldest Madison was born, her mom was smacking me, hitting me. Her mom's mom, her grandma, threatens me about who her dad is. Her nana whips my phone at my head as I'm trying to just walk out of the apartment away from all the craziness that's happening. Please show up. Throws me in the back seat. So all, I had my phone on me and I wasn't in handcuffs. I called my mom. My dad already showed up there because he was there to witness everything and told my mom everything that happened. They flew over real quickly and told that officer to let me out of that damn car. The door wasn't shut or anything. He was standing there and I was recording him standing there. Why was I in the back seat? Especially when I just told the officer, I'm the one who got hit. I'm the one who was threatened. I'm the one that just got assaulted with a weapon. Why am I in here when I'm trying to walk away? Why does need to change? Because one of these days, I'm not going to just try to walk away when the police show up. I know I ain't the one that's going to be calling them anymore. Now, it's a matter of do I keep on telling people, like, no, you can trust them or no? Because I'm learning I can't trust them. One of the other times I was arrested for no reason. Brought over to great cops. I'll well, show you how, what I mean by whatever. When I got on the phone and said the detective wants to talk to me, I'm like, look, I'm almost done painting this gas line on top of this building. Just give me a little bit of time to finish this line. Then I'm going to run home. I'm going to have a really fast shower, eat something if that's okay, please. Because I'm starving. And then I'll go with you guys peacefully. They said, okay. So I finished up. I cleaned up. Took about half an hour, got home. I yelled down to the cars, even though they were actually sitting on my porch. And I started laughing, like, sorry about that. Like, I'm okay to take a quick shower and get changed. They're like, yeah, go ahead. We, we made a deal. I'm like, okay. Thank you. So I did that. I had a quick shower, grabbed something quick to eat. Can't remember what it was, like, whatever, a quick sandwich or something, pogo, whatever it was. Went outside. I said, okay, so what exactly is going on? Like, and they said, the detective just wants to talk to you. I'm like, okay. I was being charged. No rights read, read to me or anything like that until after I was thrown in the, the holding cell near where the detective wanted to talk to me on the east end of office thing in Sony Creek almost here. But no, I was arrested pretty much. Not told what my charges were. And when speaking to the detective, the detective had to tell me that it was about this one time she was playing a playback. She was, what's happening here? I said right there, I was on my knees begging her to stop acting the way she was, and I hugged her. And all she did was roll her eyes and tell her, tell me to fuck off, like, like over. So I did. But I, I, I got charged for giving someone I loved a hug because we were married. And she was acting very insane. And I was trying to say, can you please stop this? Because it was upsetting me. But that was an unwanted touch. I asked the officer, what about all the time she unwanted touches me? She just kind of looked at me and shrugged her shoulders. Okay, so she records me giving her a hug. And I'm getting charged for that. But all the times that she's hit me, all the times she's threatened me, saying she'll cut off my hands or cut off my tongue, cut off my dick, they mean nothing to the police officer. See, what I'm seeing right here is a form of assimilation. Do I need to explain it? Or can you see what I'm talking about? I'm being taught my culture that's been wiped away from my culture. I'm gifted because I don't know why. I'm blessed with gifts and I'm so thankful I have them. I can see who has them, and my kids, they have them. But without proper nourishment, proper love, they're going to be so lost. 
And right now they're probably crushed, being forced to call someone else dad because that's what she does. She's already on to the next guy and guaranteed she's going to ruin his life too and get away with it. I want my kids back. I want laws changed. These aren't exactly just wants. These are needs. We need laws changed. I need my children to be safe. People need to start understanding that if you wear a fucking badge, you are no different from anybody. And you should understand everyone's side of a story before jumping to a conclusion of pointing your finger at somebody. A little tip that police need to understand and maybe realize shit. If someone's pointing a finger at you, they have three pointing back at them. So maybe they should check out on the, what the three people have to say first before they hit the first one that they see the finger being pointed to. Again, this all started with me calling the police asking for help getting my kids to safety. Laws need to change. To reach me, it's not that hard to find me. I post it here, but unfortunately, this is going to go live on YouTube, Facebook. So I can't just give you my information. It's not going to be that hard to find me, though. I'm one of a kind. My name's Robert the Preacher Johnston. I'm pretty sure Canada already recognizes who I am. Just look up the name.